What's going on guys? This is your boy Infane bringing you the brand new Black Ops 3 multiplayer beta hands-on impressions and review. Black Ops 3 beta that was released on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. I actually got my hands on the closed and open beta. And today I'm going to review the Black Ops 3 multiplayer beta and give you my impressions and what needs to be improved. And with that being all said, let's get started. Multiplayer has evolved substantially since Call of Duty Black Ops 2. While still meant to evoke the same spirit, building slightly off Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, player, players can now wall run, power slide, and boost jump their way across the map, which is similar to the Halo series movement more than Advanced Warfare. Wall run actually for me and a lot of people is really bad since it's a bit buggy and annoying at the same time. Make you an easy target to shoot since your visibility and control on the weapon is limited. And also, the wall running feature could be so annoying because when transitioning from a wall to a wall may cause you to fall. And an example is the map combined, which you can see in this gameplay. I fall out from the map because of wall running. It's terrifying is pretty good and doesn't need improvement. It makes the game flow way smoother and sliding in this game could be used in a good way. But it sadly replaced the dolphin dive, which is sad, but there's no problem with that for me. And that sums up my opinion about the movement and system in Black Ops 3, which needs to be a bit improved. Now that we finished from the movement system in Black Ops 3, we can now move on to the guns and create a class system. In Black Ops 3, we can pick from 10 systems and 6 attachments, which is a lot. There's a picture on the screen right now for the create a class system. Guns in Call of Duty Black Ops 3 are actually pretty solid and balanced, including levels and tacticals. And most of the weapons are solid and don't need that much of buffing nor nerfing, but there are a bit more of powerful weapons, but they are clearly not monopolized over the other guns, which is not something usual in Call of Duty since all Call of Duty games had superior weapons. For example, the two games, Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 2. In Advanced Warfare we had BAL27 and ASM1, and in Black Ops 2 we had PDW, MCMC, and A94. Lethals are pretty good if used in a good way, and now we can move on to the paint shop feature which allows you to have custom camos. We have, we have about 64 layers on each side of a weapon, which allows for awesome creations, such as the ones we saw in the Emble Creator, but now we have the total of 182 layers, which is so much, but the only bad part of the camo creator is that the camo doesn't show up on all of the weapons, which sucks, but after all, the weapons in Black Ops 3 and Paint Shop and Creator class is pretty good. And now we move on to the new specialists. Gone, gone are the no-name soldiers, the generic glee suits, and the standard issue fatigues. In Call of Duty Black Ops 3's multiplayer, you no longer play as a grunt, but rather a highly skilled specialist soldier. Each of these soldiers will have their own progression system, of which we have zero details on for now. Can equip various special weapons and abilities, and have their own background story. In the final game, Black Ops 3 will have the nine, 9 total specialists to choose from, but in the beta, we only got 8. Each has a special weapon and one unique ability you can acquire before each match, which can be used once you fill up your ability gauge, which is really easy to do because it only takes up to 5 kills to fill it up. In general, they are pretty good and can be useful in some game mods, but I wish they weren't in because they make the competitive side easier. And I talked with Mayhax about the specialist competi and competitive since he's an experienced competitor and he said that it would ruin the competitive side by making game mods easier for teams such as search and destroy when you can use a specialist that can make you see through walls and other than the specialist is pretty good and balanced. In the beta we got 9 game mods which are team deathmatch, domination, demolition, uplink, capture the flag, kill, hardpoint, confirm, search and destroy and the newly added safeguard and for the beta that's a lot of game mods and they're really nice and improved in Black Ops 3 there are 12 score streaks and score streaks are powerful and worth earning and all of the high score streaks such as the mothership is just so powerful but at the same time really hard to get and the thing that I noticed is that care packages chances of getting something high is pretty good compared to past Call of Duty games and now for connection we got a new invention, which is the ping meter that pops up when you pause the game, but the connectivity in Black Ops 3 is bad, it's just bad like it is. Other brothers in past Teriyaka games, we had a really bad connection, but here it is as bad as them. 
but it, it is as a beta. We'll have to wait and see for the new for the official game release. And now we're talking about the last thing in Black Ops 3, which is ranking up and killing time. Ranking up time was okay, not slow nor fast, and there's 55 levels in full game, but in the beta there's up to 45, and there will be 10 prestiges. In the final game, which is confirmed by David Von der Haar, so the ranking up will be about 24 hours for one prestige if you grind, and about 50 if you slap, which is medium. And now we can talk about the killing time in Black Ops 3, which is perfect and doesn't need any improvement. If I were to rate this game out of 10 stars, I would give it 9 considering it's only a beta and you should keep in mind that the beta is a fraction of the full game. And that's gonna wrap up this video. Don't forget to like and share this video because it takes so much time to make an interview and until next time guys. Yeah.